This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So recently I was playing Part-Time UFO, which is this adorable little UFO catcher game from the creators of Kirby. And I wondered out loud, why do Japanese UFOs look like that? Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about, but here in the West, the classic UFO in this part of the world is typically a smooth, symmetrical, disc-like flying saucer, like these. In Japan, though, you can observe an entirely different phenomenon. For whatever reason, almost every depiction of a UFO in Japanese pop culture looks like this, a dome-shaped spacecraft with these large spherical protrusions, usually three of them, but sometimes more, sticking out of the bottom. After I first noticed this, I started seeing it everywhere. From UFO Kirby and Kirby's Adventure, to this little UFO in Rhythm Heaven, or the UFOs in this one Rusty's Real Deal baseball minigame, just basically, odds are, if you're playing a Japanese video game and you encounter a UFO, it's gonna look like this. And it's not just limited to video games. Look at this Japanese AirPods case, or this Japanese clip art, or whatever this thing is. Somehow, at some point, the dome-shaped disc with three orbs on the bottom became Japan's automatic shorthand for a flying saucer. And the thing I couldn't stop wondering is why? This has bothered me so much that at one point I posed the question to a Japanese friend of mine, kind of rhetorically not expecting an answer, and a few minutes later she pulled up this image on her phone and showed it to me. An eerie old photograph of a Japanese school child in the 70s who claims he and his friends were visited by aliens and even drew what the craft looked like. Now this image fully got my attention. This was captivating, and I knew to get to the bottom of this mystery I would need to talk to an expert. So I reached out to a man named Professor Christopher Bader. My name is Christopher Bader. I'm a professor of sociology at Chapman University in Orange, California. And I've been studying uh, paranormal beliefs and religious beliefs for about 25 years. Now, when it comes to the subject of UFO sightings, Professor Bader is extremely knowledgeable, having even co-authored a book on the subject. So I put the question to him, I was playing like uh, some Japanese video games over the summer and I noticed that it seemed like all Japanese depictions of UFOs have this common theme to them. Like they all seem to be this rounded UFO with orbs, sometimes but not always three orbs. I actually have an example that I, that I got of this recent Japanese UFO video game mascot. Yeah. The classic yep. three orbs on the bottom. Like, why, why is there that discrepancy, I guess, between Japanese depictions of UFOs and North American, like the North American iconic UFO? I know for sure where it comes from. And uh, where it comes from are stories from the 1950s in the United States. And back in the 1950s, the, the first of these UFO stories were, hey, these friendly, these friendly people with long blonde hair who look pretty much just like us, are coming to Earth to talk to us about religion and philosophy. It was all very friendly, very mellow. And the first person to make this kind of claim was a guy named George Adamski. He eventually claimed that he'd received a psychic message that he was to go out to a place called Desert Center, California, and the aliens were going to make an appearance. So I don't know if you can see this image I've got in my background. I can, yeah. That is, that is a painting representing this instant where George claimed that a small flying saucer flew down from a large mothership and this friendly alien with long blonde hair wearing a brown jumpsuit um, spoke to him telepathically and with hand signals because the alien didn't know English. And that is the first depiction we have of this object. The object you see behind him is the object you're talking about. A um, saucer-shaped object with these three sort of globes underneath it. That was the the first time that I'm aware of that anyone sort of depicted UFOs or flying saucers in this way. And as it turns out, Adamski didn't stop there. Years later, the man would begin producing photographs that he claimed showed the spacecraft he was visited by. George Adamski wrote several popular books after this incident where he recounted his meetings with the aliens and has several very um, bad photographs. I mean, they, <laughs> they seem to be obviously faked, but whatever, um, of objects exactly like what you're talking about. This huh. sort of flying saucer with that dome on top 
um, with windows and then underneath these three circular objects. People who are skeptics of Adamski's story say that the reason the objects look like that were because he was actually taking pictures of something that was an egg warmer for chicken coops. <laughs> and that's how they were depicted. And that image really took off from there. So that explains where this style of UFO originates from. But why is it so common specifically in Japanese media? Here's what Professor Bader told me. So what, what I can tell you is that George Damsky has become a hugely popular figure in Japan that there are a lot of Japanese books that are comic books and manga that depict his story. Whoa. There are translations of his books are very popular in Japan. So I can, there's two facts I can give you. That's where it came from and he is popular in, in Japan. The question I cannot answer for you is why? <laughs> um, why is he so popular in Japan? Why did he take a foothold? I can just tell you he has because um, in other countries, these stories do not continue to have such a foothold. Um, and and the mo more modern depictions of flying saucers where they don't have these three weird balls underneath, they just look like discs, are hugely popular all over the world. Mm -hmm. So that's the big mystery. I don't know if you'll be able to find out anything <laughs> about it, but I just honestly don't know why. I can't tell you why this image gathered this foothold. I can only tell you that it did. And yeah. this is definitely where it came from. So then what about that creepy drawing we found? Well, I showed it to Professor Bader and here was his reaction. Oh yeah, this one, okay. Yeah, um, this image is very familiar to me because there's um, there are a few cases around. One was in um, South Africa where you had groups of school children who would claim that a UFO had, a, had arrived and go in and look at it. And this is one of the most famous ones. And yeah, that alien, it's, uh, that's interesting. It's, I'd forgotten it had three balls. <laughs> underneath it. Yeah. Personally, my thoughts are yes. The probability that uh, George Damsky actually saw an alien <laughs> is very, very low. Um, the one thing I can tell you is that alien stories change with our culture, and that tells me a lot. Yeah, that's a good point. That that basically, um, and you can see it, for example, when, when a new alien story becomes popular, a new type of alien becomes popular, all of a sudden it will start showing up in another culture at the point in time that the books or the media that depict that alien start showing up in that culture or become popular. So so the UFO abduction stories, the you know little grays coming in your room and abducting you, that's a virus that started in the USA and people just weren't claiming these things for the most part until those stories started spreading. Then all of a sudden the aliens showed up. Um, <laughs> so whatever aliens are, they are something that, um, what they look like, where they come from, what they say to us, what they want to do to us, it changes as culture changes. So gotcha. the only question that remains is why Adamski was so damn popular in Japan. And while Professor Bader made it clear that he has no conclusive answer to this question, we came up with some interesting theories. I personally have quite a fondness for these contactee no. stories because they're so fun and innocent. And it's evident. quaint. It's charming. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they are charming. Just, oh, I can go out in the desert and I'm going to meet this friendly guy and he's going to tell me about space Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's nice that they're not antagonistic. <laughs> yes, that's that's the thing that, that um, maybe there's something there about why they took a hold of Japanese culture because Basically, um, the aliens got mean in the 1960s, that that's when the abduction stories first started making an appearance. And um, I think, again, this is a cultural thing. It's sort of our loss of innocence and our, our, our um, sort of uh, negative feeling about the way the world was going. And, and, and so the 1950s alien stories point to kind of a more innocent time when we would, when we could possibly believe that if aliens came to visit us, they might just want to chat and have coffee with us. And right. Funny thing to me is that, um, when I talk to my students about these these stories from the 1950s, they immediately say, oh, how stupid, how silly, <laughs> how could anybody believe that? And then when I tell them about stories about, well, now the modern stories of the aliens are going to creep into your bedroom and molest you, that, oh, that sounds more realistic. <laughs> um, neither one of those stories is inherently more realistic or, or probable. Right. It's just that some of them appeal more to us and seem more realistic because nowadays, we believe if we were to meet a stranger, they probably want to do us harm. Yeah. So, wow. It's beautifully so, put. And I think that you might be onto something because like a lot of the depictions of Japanese UFOs that I've encountered are these like, like this is a cute, benign, friendly, adorable idea of a UFO, which is more in line with the Adamski version of UFOs than the contemporary, I guess, like Western idea of UFOs. 
Yes, that, that to the extent that Japanese culture, I mean, obviously we're talking about something very monolithically here. You know, Japanese culture right. is many different things, like US culture is many different things. Mm-hmm. But to the extent that certain segments of Japanese culture、um, are looking more towards positive, optimistic, friendly, fun imagery, they would look, they would definitely drift more towards Adamski than they would towards most modern stories. Wow, that、so. is fascinating. A huge thank you to Professor Bader for taking the time to chat with me, and another huge thank you to this video's sponsor, Squarespace. All right, I am 100% certain that by now you've heard of Squarespace, and there's a really good reason for that. These days, odds are if you've been to somebody's personal website and seen a slick, beautiful page, they probably built it using Squarespace. The reason Squarespace is so beloved is because it really is the most painless and convenient way to put together a website, giving you a beautiful and powerful online platform that lets you easily put together your own page however you see fit. For you, that could mean building a portfolio, setting up an email newsletter, even earning revenue by offering exclusive members only content, all from within Squarespace's shockingly straightforward interface. To start your free trial, head to squarespace.com, and once you're ready to launch your page, go to squarespace.com slash Nick Robinson to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. If any of you have other examples of this style of UFO that you've noticed in video games, I would love to see them in the comments below. I read all of them. And before you go, if you'd like to support the videos on this channel and watch my full conversation with Dr. Bader, you can either click this thumbnail or click the join button underneath this video. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.